Hey guys, Tammy here. I haven't uh, made a movie in a while because we haven't really had to do anything to the bike in a while. <laughs> Except from, you know, the routine maintenance of cleaning your chain and um, changing the oil. But uh, we did that yesterday. The bike was really, really messy. And Sean took it out for a long ride. So there's our chain all nice and clean. All nice and pretty and shiny. Um, the bike is on our stands today. And what we're going to do is we're not going to deal with the back end. We're going to work with the front today. While we were up at Dill's Gap and having a blast riding around on Tail of the Dragon and um, all that good stuff, uh, we kind of quick cooked the front end a little bit and <laughs> have to replace the brakes and the rotors. Now these rotors are the stock rotors that have been with it since we bought the bike and we've probably put about 14,000 miles on it since we bought it so they're they're a little warped <laughs> um, not a lot but just enough to, to wake you up when you go to stop short but also as you can see there's a lot of little grooves on here which means um, dirt and debris and all sorts of nasties have gotten in there um, which hinders your braking ability, which is never a good thing when you're on something as powerful as a 1000. But another way to test it is um, not only just to look at it, but to confirm is you want to take your fingernail and you want to run it across the top of the, of the rotor. And when it focuses, sorry about that. Come on, focus. Focus. All right. When you run it across the top, I can feel all of those grooves in my fingernail. So that means that I'm not having good contact with the brake pad to the rotor itself. And that's going to keep me from stopping as quickly as I need to sometimes. <laughs> so we've gone ahead and I bought some new rotors. And we're going to change that out today. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to loosen these little bolts right here. These two little guys. And on the other side, there's um, a 22 millimeter axle bolt. That's right over here. That's this guy right here. And we have a breaker bar for that. So these are 12 mils, this is 22 mil. And once these are all loose and we pull the axle out, we can remove our tire and change out with our new brandy new rotors. So let's go ahead and get that started. I've got my breaker bar. I've got my 22 mil. This is probably going to be overkill on this ratchet, but that's okay. A little bit more oomph is better. I won't need to use the breaker bar. And my little 12 mil for the little tiny sockets. Lefty loosey, righty tighty. I'm just going to loosen these up just really careful because your whole bike is sitting on this little tiny space. the threads look really nice and it looks like it's held up pretty well okay. okay now I've got my axle bolt off as we've already seen and I've loosened the axle 
uh, itself and pulled it out a little bit. But the second portion of taking off the tire is you got to remove your calipers because if you go to pull the tire off right now, it'll mar your, uh, your rims and that's never a good thing. So this is where your 14 millimeter socket comes in and you're going to loosen up these guys and take these right off and make sure we support them so they don't hang and um, create any damage to any of these uh, attachments here. So let's go ahead and do that. Now I like to loosen each one of these on a half and half at the same time so there's not undue pressure on the metal here. Now you could use air guns, you could use pretty much any tool that you like, but when it comes to brakes and bolts on the front end, I kind of like to do, uh, to do everything by hand. And I'm sure you have your own tools that you enjoy using, and I just happen to like to use the little ones. Now, these bolts are a little older. So I'm going to probably brush them up a little bit and kind of clean them off, put some more uh, sealant on it, some little Loctite, red Loctite, not the blue stuff, but throw that on there. They're looking kind of crappy, so we'll take care of that. Okay, now caliper will just come right off. Be careful not to scratch this, and you're going to want to inspect your brake pads inside. Now you see that's where all this stuff was from... Uh, from our bolt. And that's kind of crazy. So we're, we're going to clean all of this stuff up before we replace the pads because the pads are looking kind of shot too. Um, that's kind of dirty. A lot of brake dust is in there. But while you're here, while you've got it all off, inspect your, your caliper itself. Make sure there's no fluid leaking from here or here. These are really dirty. Um, if there is any fluid, then uh, you'll know you're going to have to double check, you know, the, the connections and um, all that good stuff. So this looks pretty good, except this side that it's dirty. We're going to go ahead and um, uh, support this. I'll probably get a bucket and um, we'll take the, the wheel off. Okay, now our caliper is it's uh, supported, so we're not having any undue stress on those lines. We're going to go ahead and finish taking out our axle bolt and remove our tire. So again, I'm going to put my foot up underneath the tire, give it a little bit of support as we wiggle this little guy back out, and sometimes the bushing goes with it, so we'll just slide that back into place. So there we are, and there's our, our bushing, so we're going to just stick that back in there. That way we don't lose it and it doesn't get all yucky. All right, off comes our tire. And that is step one. Time to remove our rotors. We've got our tire mounted on a nice sturdy surface and we've got our T40 star, um, our torque bit, and I just put it in here just to kind of give me a little extra leverage. Now we're going to go ahead and we're going to take off all these little bolts in here. But you got to be careful because they're really super finicky and um, they strip out really easy once you get into um, aluminum. It tends to get, be a little soft. So um, what you want to do is just really, really carefully get a good grip on it and very carefully give it a turn. And they should all come pretty loose, pretty easy. They're not in there too, too tight. Just kind of be careful. I wouldn't use any air guns this um, just because you'll strip things out and that's not fun. So, I like to do just a little bit here and there again to make sure that uh, there's even pressure.
like we would do with any bolt that we take out. We want to inspect them to make sure that um, that they look good. Now this has got red Loctite on it. So <laughs> I have blue. So you don't want to confuse the blue with the red. I don't know why. This is really blue. See, it's blue. It's in a red tube, but it's really blue. I was hoping that this was going to have blue Loctite on it, but it doesn't. It has red. So I'm going to have to find some red. So anyway, you don't want to mix the two together. And then this rotor just lifts right off. And there you have it. That's the machine side. That's the bottom. So it connects right to our wheel. And there you go. Now, what I've got in replacement is we bought some wave rotors. You can get um, whatever you want. You can get uh, regular you know, stock ones if you want, the ones that look like that. But we decided to go really kind of cool. And we got these from MadHornet.com. Those guys are really cool. They're out from California. And these are Arashis. And they came directly from the distributor. So lucky for them, they didn't have to turn around and reship these out. So these are uh, three and a half millimeters. And these are four and a half. So that means the thickness here. That doesn't mean here or anything. This is just surface area. It means the thickness here. So that means uh, when I go to put these back in to the calipers, then they're going to have to be pushed out a little bit more than I would if I had these guys. So we're going to probably sell these on eBay. They're not too terribly bad, but, uh, you know, they are what they are. But these guys are going to be the cool ones. So all you have to do is just put this right back on here, line up the little holes, and put your bolts in one by one. Of course, after you put in some more red Loctite, I'm not going to screw these down. And while that holds on, I've gone ahead and started to put these all back together. And once you get this in pretty good, hand tight, give it a good, you know, other little pipe there. And uh, we'll repeat the process on the other side. Check the Loctite. We've got red again. It'd be kind of funny if it was red and then blue on the other side. So there's the old one. Okay, you can see all the grooves. See the grooves inside there? How oh, they're not good. And I can feel those with my fingers. So, put that right there with the other one. And we've got our new one. Again, they only go one way. You know, so it doesn't matter how many you put in. new rotors on the front brakes of the Repsol. So now all you have to do is reverse this process and put it all back together. Now I don't remember if I ever showed you how to do brakes. I think I showed you how to take them off and put them on. But I'm going to go ahead and give you a refresher anyway. Okay. This is our caliper, as everybody knows. And these are our new brake pads. Well, they're they're older ones, but they're new anyway. <laughs> We're going to use these ones. Now, with these, I have a 3 16 torque. And that fits right into these little pins here, these little guys. And this, these two little bolts here, I'm going to take these out so I don't drop them. Those guys, these guys here, hold clip in, which actually if this focuses, come on, um, it holds 
my pads in. Now you can see the caliper a little bit here. See how those pistons, there's four pistons, one, two, three, four. Now every time you squeeze your brake lever, these pistons are going to squash up against your rotor and uh, that's what makes you stop. So we're going to go ahead and take these out and then we're going to compress the rotors back in. But first we have to take these two little guys out first. this little piece right here. When you go to put it back in, you're going to squish this little piece right here down so it kind of goes over and under the little thing. And that's what holds it all together. So I'm just going to stick that right here so I can squeeze it. And we'll do the other side. Now I also have my little finger underneath holding, see, holding the pads because what's going to happen is when you take this one out, the pads are just going to fall out. So, there's that clip. Just going to get both of them out. And that clip goes right here for now. And they just come right out. See? Ta-da! Now you can see our calipers here. And you can see they're pretty much out. There's one, two, three, four. Now I could go ahead and clean all this stuff up. You want to go ahead. There's a lot of people that have tools to do this. You put your pad in and have a tool and do this. But what you want to make sure is that if you use your fingers, like I'm going to do, you want to put one on one side and one on the other side. That way you have even pressure when you go to push these, push them back in. Because if you don't have even pressure when you compress them, you could ruin the caliper. And it's not really hard. You know, if you can open a jam jar, you can compress these. <laughs> kind of a funny analogy. But you want to be really kind of careful. You want to compress them as far in as you possibly can. Because I'm going to need the extra space for those super awesome new rotors that, I, that we just installed. Okay. So now you can see they're all compressed. They're all in there real good. And we're just going to take our new pads and slide them into the slot, right where they are. And let me get this down real quick. Get the other one. This is the other one. This one goes on the top. Now this is kind of the, tr the tricky part because if you've got little fingers, you can kind of just stick them in there. You know, and hold everything in place. You know, while you go ahead and put these little guys. See, I just use my thumb. And you want to put these little guys back in your hole. And like I said earlier, you want to have it go in. Oops. And then when you feel it give you resistance, you want to push this little tab down. And then it'll slide all the way through. And we'll go to the other side. Really easy Okay, now we're ready for our tire, and now you have to be careful. You can't just throw this tire back on. I mean, you probably could, but you'd probably have issues. Um, when the wheel is mounted and you put new tires on, on the wheel, there's a specific direction that the tires need to go in. It's called a directional tire, which means that is the direction that your forward motion needs to go on the tire. 
Now, if you put it in backwards, your tread is going to be facing all the wrong way, and I don't know what's going to happen, but I'm sure it's not good. So, how do you know which way to put your tire? Because now you took it off, and you don't really know exactly how to put it back on. Well, these are Michelin Pilot Pures. These are my favorite tires. I love these tires. I almost have a love affair with them, but um, <laughs> I won't put anything else on my bikes. They're awesome in the rain, and they're just fantastic. I get about you know, 4,500, 5,000 miles on them. Flat track and mountain riding. So, these ones are actually almost pretty shot. You know, check the grooves, but that's for another time. So anyway, how, how do we know that these are directionals? How do we know? Well, these guys are pretty awesome, and I don't know if you can see it or not, but right here, right there, it says front. <laughs> and it has a little arrow, and it's pointing that way. So if I put this tire on this way, my tread is going to go the wrong way. So, we turn it around, and now we are going in the right direction. So, let's go ahead and put this tire in. We'll pound this in, but now we have to put the calipers back on. Now I've got my bolts already here. Um, those are going to line back up into these holes. But before I do that, I'm going to take these little bolts that I took out and just kind of put them in here. That way I don't lose them and I don't accidentally you know, roll on them. <laughs> you never know what's going to happen. So let's just put those there so we don't lose them. Okay. So. Now we have our brand new brakes on the new rotor. Let's move our brake out of the way. We're not going to do that anymore. Now, if you did everything right and put your calipers in and everything's nice and spread apart, then they fit in like a glove. Ta -da! And that's all there is to it. If you have any questions, go ahead and email me at uh, hammy1000rr at gmx.com. And uh, if you have any questions for me at all, go ahead and write them up. If you want to see me do something else, I'll see what I can do. Talk to you later. Bye. Safe riding.